Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anjali Wheeler, and I'm the tech lead of 360 and 3D videos at YouTube. So I'm going to talk about three things today. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about three things today. I'm going to talk about 360 video. I'm going to talk about 3D video. And then we mix the two together, and we talk about 360 and 3D together. So by a show of hands, how many of you have seen a 360 video? Ooh, everyone. How many of you have seen a spherical video? The They're the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. OK. So they're called spherical videos because you can imagine a viewer like sitting inside in sphere in the middle of a sphere and looking outwards, and that's the world view. Um, I would have liked to create one, but it's too much work. <laughs> so uh, what do spherical videos look like? Uh, so they're essentially a sphere which is projected onto a flat surface, and we call this method projection. And this method has been used for a long time by map makers because the Earth is a sphere, and we like maps on a flat surface. So this is a projection which we call equirectangular. And uh, as you can see, it's essentially like uh, a sphere just unwrapped and flattened out. There are several other uh, projections that have been used, like the world map. That's another example of equirectangular projection. And uh, let's see these. There's the quintessential on the left, and there's the gude. And uh, just uh, as an example, we want to use things which are rectangular, and the one on the right that is not rectangular, it's not useful for us because there are lots of wasted pixels there. So we don't use those kinds of projections. So let's talk about how do we shoot a 360 video. Uh, today, there are lots of uh, cameras in the market which can shoot 360 videos. I have one here to show. That's a uh, Ricoh Theta. It has two lenses on both sides. They both take a 180-degree view of the world. And uh, once it shoots, they are like, all of these cameras have multiple lenses. And the video streams are several, depending on the number of lenses. And after that, you use a stitching software to stitch them all together into a single video frame. So that's about capture. Now, once this video is ready, you can upload it to YouTube. So how does YouTube know whether it's a 360 video or it's a standard video? Uh, we tried several things there. We tried auto detection to see, like, we had a filter that will automatically find out if a video is 360. And the problem was the auto detector was very good, but it was not perfect. And when you go to YouTube scale, like, even a 0.1% error is very big. Like, uh, imagine you uploading a 360 video and it's appearing weird, and people who are uploading standard video and that doesn't show up right. So that wasn't enough for us. Then we thought, OK, let's do a checkbox. When people upload a video, they'll do a checkbox. My video is spherical. It shows up very well. It doesn't work. Yeah, and we tried it before with the 3D videos. So people uh, uploaded 3D videos, and there was a checkbox. And the problem was a lot of people didn't know how to use it correctly. There were people whose videos were not 3D, they checked it, and people with videos who were 3D, and they didn't check it, and everyone was frustrated, including us. And so that didn't work well. So we thought, OK, the best way is to have the 360 cameras uh, include some metadata in the video to tell YouTube that this video is 360. And we approached the 360 camera makers with this idea. We created a spec for the metadata that can be introduced into the file. And the camera makers like this idea. They agreed to put it in the file. So this works. And for a few cameras which don't have the metadata, we have a Python script that you can run on your video. It's not great. I'm sorry. But I hope that in future, like uh, with time, all cameras are going to put the metadata in the file. So uh, with that, let's talk about render. So how do we render 360 videos? We need some sort of a 3D API, OpenGL or DirectX. And we map the texture of the video onto these sphere mesh, just the way it's supposed to be as per the projection. And it works. We have uh, 
gravity and the gyro sensors. So when you move your device, you, the view pans. Have every, has everyone used it on a mobile device? How many of you used it on a mobile device? Okay, cool. And so we call this mode the magic window mode. And that's because this device is like a magical window into another world. And you can move this window around. And you, it moves you into the other world. And the other is, of course, the VR mode. So that's cool. I sort of have some sort of a personal affinity to VR. Like in the 80s, they were the first set of VR headsets that showed up. And they weren't really great. They were like 320 by 200 resolution. They had five frames per second, and they were heavy, and nobody liked it. And uh, so I was bummed out. Then in 1999, the Matrix showed up, and I was again revved up, yay, VR. But uh, again, the world was not ready for VR. So I did the nearest thing I could do. I joined a 3D FPS gaming job. Anyways, so I'm happy that now we are in a much better place for VR, and uh, the chances of this succeeding this time around are pretty high. So with that, let's talk about the quality of spherical videos. So in this pro projection that we've been talking about, there's a horizontal field of view of 360 and a vertical of 180. This gives us six pixels per degree. So who knows uh, what is the eye resolution in terms of pixels per degree? Pardon me? Yeah. So it's uh, 60 pixels per degree, or per arc minute. So we are at 6. We want to go to 60. How do we go from 6 to 60? And uh, we are like researching several things to go from 6 to 60. So it's the eyes retina resolution. And one of the ideas is cropping. Let's crop the top and the bottom, because people don't look up when they are watching the 360 videos, or they don't spend time looking at the floor. They look forward. So how about we crop them out, and then we get like uh, close to 10 pixels per degree. The other ideas are tiling. Let's have several streams, and when people turn their heads, you switch to a new stream. And uh, tiling gives us uh, another advantage. In horizontal, we get almost 10.6. We combine them together. We get 10 on both sides, approximately. And uh, 4K phones are just around the corner. They're right there, right there. And so that takes us to 20. So that's good. We are close. So that's one of the things we are trying to do, the quality, improve the quality. And uh, another thing that is tough with the uh, spherical videos is just the sheer amount of data. So if you look at this image, the area under the red is the area captured by a standard video. And uh, we have like four times more things there. And add depth and 3D to it, it gets even worse. So that's another area we'd like to improve upon. So that's about 360. And uh, I'm going to talk about 3D after this. So are there any questions so far? Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, those features, we are doing it on a, you can say, platform by platform basis. So on the web, we support zooming in and out. And on other clients, we do wish to. And uh, I cannot say when we'll do it. So let's talk about 3D. It's sort of an old story, but uh, I feel like I should talk about it before we talk about 3D and spherical together. And, uh, so how do humans perceive 3D? This is a perfectly 2D image. And I'm pretty sure every one of you here can figure out what's far away and what's close by. So humans can completely make sense out of a completely 2D, you could say, picture, and know what's far, what's near. But we know that this is fake. This is not real depth. And so uh, we perceive 3D by something called disparity. We have two eyes at two different locations. They see two different views of the world. And we compute the difference, and we figure out what's far and what's near. So that's what we try to replicate when we do 3D in computing. And one example is there are 3D cameras, which just have two lenses, at exactly the same distance as human eye. 
and uh, they capture two views and we can just put them side by side, we can put them top, bottom, and they are like, people have tried every possible way to do it, interlaced and uh, temporal, like alternate frames, one frame for the left eye, one for the right eye. And uh, all of them produce more or less this uh, similar results where there's a viewing instrument that people wear to f filter the left and the right eye correctly. So uh, we can always watch a 2D view of 3D, throw away one of the eyes view and just watch it in 2D. Uh, this is the anaglyph or these funny red and blue filters. And uh, we could do polarized, which is most movie theaters do that, and a lot of TVs have polarized glasses support too. Uh, one downside with polarization is that it cuts the brightness in half, so the TV or the movie theater has to be twice as bright. And uh, then we have VR. Cool. So that's about uh, 3D. So before I talk about spherical, uh, any questions on 3D? No, cool. So now we are going to mix the two together. We talked about top bottom, we talked about uh, equirectangular, and we mix the two together and we get equirectangular top bottom. And uh, that's the most popular way today to represent uh, spherical videos. How do we capture them? Jump. There's a talk right after me. You'll learn about jump there. So let's talk about playback. Playback is again two of the uh, same idea. There's a magic window mode and there is a cardboard view. And uh, that's how people will be able to enjoy spherical 3D. We don't support it yet, but we do plan to soon. And uh, so that's the rendering part. But when we introduce 3D, there are a lot of things that are needed to make uh, users comfortable. Uh, like uh, some people get motion sick when they watch uh, VR, and uh, some people get headaches. And so there are some things to keep in mind. For example, the IPD, or the interpupillary resistance. So humans come in all shapes and sizes, and so People whose eyes are closer together, they are not very comfortable when they see VR, which is made for the point of view of somebody whose eyes are farther apart. So it's essentially the head size. And so we need to make sure that the IPD is right for the person and maybe provide a way to calibrate and adjust for it. There are field of view issues. Uh, so there's been research done on it, and uh, it was found that People are more comfortable when the field of view is higher. People also get motion sick more when the field of view is higher. So there's no good, great path here. It's a balance act. And uh, the third thing is latency, like when people move their head, how long does it take for the image to move? And uh, that's, again, something that needs to be as low as possible. So there's the tech aspects of 360, 3D, and uh, the YouTube part. Thank you.